a few times when we've been talking off camera recently, you've mentioned benign personalities. And I found this a bit surprising because there's one thing that personalities don't you know, seem to me, and that's bizarre, benign. I mean, they seem angry or, you know, emotional or upset or, you know, whatever it is. There's some com um, consequence, some outcome to being identified with personality like that. Mm. So I guess if the outcomes aren't benign, then the personality itself, it seems strange, you know, to think that a personality could be. Well, I think uh, you can look at extremes, can't you, of uh, what would be an extreme example of a non-benign personality. Any um, dictator, the personality traits are negative in as much as they, uh, they are psychopathic, they, they have no uh, morality that stops them wanting, or if people get hurt in order to fulfil their needs... They have no compunction to uh, curtail that. So th that's that's one extreme. You must have met some people who go around... Um, Castaneda talks about it in his books. He uses the phrase a petty tyrant. Now, this is someone who's projecting out all their stuff and all their anger, and they're whipping up energy around them and they're upsetting people. If there's someone who's, got a, who's a very angry type, it makes people around them very angry often. It's a kind of chain reaction. It brings out, if there's anger in them, it will bring it out and it creates a reaction and it likes that reaction. It likes to get people upset. So there are people out there who, who are like that, who thrive on that. They may not be aware of what they're doing, but this is what's happening. So the other extreme is, you may have a personality trait that is perhaps the opposite of that in as much as it has low self-esteem rather than too much uh, kind of self-belief, self-belief in the terms of putting themselves first. So the opposite of that would be someone who has low s lack of self-love and um, would perhaps maybe produce shyness or lack of confidence. So rather than inflicting uh, domination on other people, they're they're kind of to they're inward and um, they're patterns maybe would affect them more than those outside like the dictator um those patterns don't really inflict on him at all he's not suffering from being overly controlling he's he's inflicting that on others someone with low self-esteem problems is mainly inflicting it on themselves i mean i say mainly because you know people around are still going to feel <clears throat> The presence of uh, of lack of self love, which may be in terms of depression, for example, and that affects those who are around. But if you see, by contrast, it's not the same as being around someone whose shadow is really kind of coming out and uh, is destructive. It's still it's still harmful to the person, but it's it's benign in as much as if you're around it, you're not going to. You know, those people outside are not going to get really adversely affected by it. I mean, when you say that, I mean, it, it, what, what comes up is, you know, I mean, we've talked before that I have a, you know, I'm, I'm guessing most personalities have a bit of a Jekyll and Hyde side. Mm. Um, you know, and I, I, I genuinely think, hopefully, you know, I'm, I'm quite pleasant or benign to be around, but, you know, I definitely have a side if I'm insecure, maybe, or, I mean, one thing that if, if something seems unfair... I could turn into a monster, mm. you know, completely different from the person, you know, who, who I think myself to be. Mm. Um, I mean, I think there's a, there's a side of myself which sort of says, well, you know, if you are going to need to stand up for yourself or have a fight, better, you know, a monster's quite a good thing to do, be. Well, you could stand up for yourself without having a, a monster inside, <laughs> you know what I mean? Those, and, and, that's an interesting point, because those are two different things. One is what the Chinese would call wood chi, which is upright protective energy and one is an emotion of anger which which has none of the purity of that right. which, which can hurt for no reason sure i mean like yes and i and i'm aware that that i can stand up for myself in one of two ways i can you know like keep my head or lose it is the simple mm. when you describe the benign personality as a depressive or whatever i mean i've met people like that who seem quite nice but actually again they have this hide sight 
Do you think? I mean, do you think most personalities have it? Or yeah, I do. Yeah, it's the shadow, isn't it? I mean, it's sorry, the shadow. Not... Yes, we've seen this. We we took you as an example of a benign <laughs> benign personality. We've discussed this in the past. But I've seen your shadow come out, and it's it's quite an amazing thing to see because the the. The contrast is phenomenal because if you have a benign personality and then the shadow suddenly is um, brought out, it's literally like Jekyll and Hyde, you know, that yes. famous story because it's so different. And it's the flip side, obviously, it's the shadow side. I can think of an example recently where a friend of mine was provoked and got angry and it was a similar thing. I mean, it was... Yeah. I mean, I also remember the time when I, I, you know, got angry or times when I've been in my jackal. And it's a very different experience of being. Mm. How is it? Again, less rational. You're not thinking as much. You're just feeling. I mean, that, for me, there was a feeling of righteousness, indignation, justification. Yeah. Um, and I'm lucky enough to, when that happens often be aware that, you know, like you get off of that feeling for a while and then it's like, hang on, I know that this isn't going to last. This is this, bullshit. Yeah, that one. <laughs> yeah, you see through it. The shadow is, by its nature, in the shadow, it's unconscious. So it thrives on you not being aware of it. And you've just described a case where it arose and for a while you weren't aware of it. And then choiceless awareness came in and, and could see, oh, hang on a minute, this is, this is I'm not I'm not being rational. This is not... This is not going to end well. <laughs> but there are times when, you know... Like we said, the shadow is has a lot of energy because repressed energy, you know, grows and it's strong. And there are times when it's so strong that that awareness coming in and checking it could not arise. Maybe f certainly in that moment, but even for days or weeks. I mean, this is how crimes of passion happen. There was a case recently of a woman who had been abused by her husband, um, just being dominated by him. It's a very classic scenario, isn't it, for, for decades, I think. And she killed him and um, she, she had no notion, or she had no memory of doing it. The shadow in her that had been repressed, which would have begun as a natural um, wood energy, as I said in Chinese terms, that would have stopped a domination from someone else it was repressed so much and that then grows into this huge shadow this huge kind of ball of, ball of fury absolute fury that that totally overrides any awareness of hang on a minute i'm gonna kill this guy and so much so that she's so unpresent that she can't even kind of remember doing it she mm. certainly didn't plan it so that's that's your crime of passion but it's a good example of what happens with with the shadow and what the sh what the shadow is and how uh, powerful it is, it's a bit scary. I think, and I'm, I wonder if people watching this, you know, I mean, it's, it might might feel a bit discomforted at the idea that there's a part of ourselves that we have very little control over. We can't necessarily, you know, we go and look at it willingly, you know, because it'll be in our blind spot almost, um, you know, or, or the personality is not necessarily going to want us to see this. Mm. Um, you know, that it could e erupt at any moment and lead us to do goodness knows what. I mean, that's a bit scary, I guess. Well, I think it's kind of rare that you get... A killing. A killing, but the principle, the same principle is still there. We're talking about you being in a position where you lose control and, you know, you become... Basically, love goes out the window as, as the ruling force. The answer, of course... With, with everything is awareness because awareness is the opposite shadow exists because there's no awareness wow. awareness is the light that takes away the shadow